Hello friends, welcome to another new video. This is Lipsa again with me. So in my last video, I have described how we can create a simple lambda function and deploy it in AWS Lambda and test that particular piece of code. Okay. So in today's video, we will learn how we can invoke a lambda function when we upload a file in S3 bucket. So let's get started guys then. So for this, we need to create a S3 bucket first. Then we will create a lambda function. Then we will add a trigger to lambda so that when we upload a particular file to S3 bucket, that lambda function will be executed. So for this, first we need to sign in to our AWS management console. So as you can see, I have already logged into my AWS management console. So here, I will go to S3 management console to create the S3 bucket first. So in the services section, you can search for S3. So here, this is the S3, just click here. So this is my S3 management console. So here, I will create my bucket first. So click here to create a bucket. So here, uh, you can provide your bucket name. So I will provide my bucket name like uh, lambda trigger, lambda trigger S3 put event bucket. Okay, this is my bucket name. You can provide according to your choice. So now you need to provide the region, AWS region that is Asia Pacific. I have chosen. You can choose your corresponding region. Then I'll keep everything as is and click here to create the bucket. So my lambda trigger S3 put event bucket is now ready. Then what is the next step? Next step is to create a lambda function. Similarly, here search for lambda in the services. Here you can see lambda is there. Just open this in new tab to go to the lambda management console. So this is my lambda management console. Here you can create your lambda function. So before creating lambda function, make sure you have chosen your uh, region same with the region where you have created your S3 bucket. So we have created our S3 bucket in Asia Pacific region. So you need to create your function in Asia Pacific region as well. So here you can see I have chosen Mumbai. So this is nothing but Asia Pacific Mumbai. Okay. So the lambda function must be created in the same region where the S3 bucket is created. So let me create the function now. So I go with this option author from scratch. Here you need to provide your basic information for this lambda. So first you need to provide your function name. So let me provide the function name like st put event lambda. Okay. You can provide any name. I am just providing st put event lambda. So now I will choose the run type. So I will go with Java 11. You can choose according to your choice. So then we have the uh, permission by default lambda will create an execution role with permission to upload logs to Amazon CloudWatch logs. Okay, you can customize this default role later when adding triggers. Okay, so then change default execution role. So now we'll choose a role that defines the permission for this function. Okay, so there are so many options create a new role with basic lambda permissions, use an existing role, create a new role from AWS policy templates. So let me go to my IAM console so that I can create my custom role for this lambda function. So here in the services, search for IAM. So click here to go to your IAM management console. So here I will create the roles for this lambda. So click here in the role section. Click here, create role option. So the role option for the AWS services, which AWS services you want to create a role. So I choose this lambda. Okay, then click here next. Then here you need to add the permission. Okay, so which permission uh, I need to add? So I choose AWS uh, basic lambda. Okay, I will choose AWS Lambda basic execution role first. I will choose S3. See here Amazon S3 full access. So I will choose this option. 
Amazon S3 full access Azure S AWS Lambda basic execution role. So click here next. Then provide your role name. So I'll provide the role name like S3 read event role. Okay. Then tag just keep it as optional. Then click here to create role. So which policy we have added for this role? Amazon S3 full access, also AWS Lambda basic execution role. So click here to create a role. So here in the role section, you can see S3 read, read event role is created successfully. So now let's come back to our Lambda and attach this role to our Lambda. Okay. So I'll choose this one, use an existing role. So in the drop down, you can see S3 read event role is there. Choose this one, then click here to create a function. Okay, so now we have successfully created our S3 put event lambda. Okay, so two steps we have completed so far. We have created our S3 bucket, also we have created our S3 put event lambda function. So now what else? Now we will add a trigger to this lambda function so that when we will upload a file to S3 uh, bucket, then this lambda will be invoked. So how we can add a trigger? We can add the trigger at lambda side or we can add the trigger at S3 bucket side. So for this video, I will add this trigger in the lambda side itself. So click here to add a trigger. So we need to select a source. So for this, we have the source as S3. Okay, so whenever we upload something in the S3 bucket, our lambda will be triggered. So I will choose S3. Now we will provide the bucket name. So in our case, the bucket is lambda trigger S3 put event bucket. So I will choose this one. Then what is the event type? Well, the lambda will be invoked when we put something inside this S3 bucket. So I will choose the event type is put here. So then we have prefix and suffix. So what is this prefix? Prefix means let's say inside your bucket we have a another folder. So whenever a object is uploaded to that particular folder, then you want to invoke your lambda. At this case, you can provide your prefix like your folder name. Okay. Similarly, suffix if you want to uh, invoke this lambda function when a JPG file is uh, uploaded or when a PDF file is uploaded or when a JSON file is uploaded. So, in that case, you can provide your suffix. So, I don't want to change anything for prefix and suffix. I just want to keep it as is. Okay. This is the optional for you. Then we have the recursive invocation. So what is the recursive invocation? It is the important point please mark. If your function writes objects to an S3 bucket, ensure that you are using different S3 buckets for input and output. Okay. Else what happens? Else if you write to the same buckets, that increases the risk of creating a recursive invocation, which can result in increased lambda usage and increased cost. Okay. So please make sure you are not writing to the same S3 buckets for input and output. Clear? So just acknowledge this statement and add this trigger to the lambda. Okay, our trigger is also added to our lambda. S3 put event lambda. So this is the bucket name. So you can see the details over here. Okay, so trigger is added successfully. Now what else? Now we will write a Java project. So, which will read this event. Whenever we upload something in our S3 bucket, that will read that event and print that event details in our CloudWatch log. Okay, so for this, we need to create a Java program. So, let me go to my IntelliJ idea to write the Java program for it. So, you can see I have already created a Maven project for this Lambda Trigger S3 upload. So, let me expand this project. And let me open the form.xml to show you what is the required dependencies we, uh, needed for this project. So see, I have added the AWS Lambda Java code dependency as we are dealing with the AWS Lambda. So this is needed. Also, I have added the uh, SDK for S3 as we are going to read the object content from the S3 bucket. So I have added this piece of dependency. Also, I have added AWS Lambda Java event this one and i have added the command at io so that will that will convert input stream to the string actually so that's why i have added this piece of code so i'll show you the usage of this command at io 
in our program. So let me go to my SSD folder and expand the main. So inside this main, we have the Java. Inside this Java package, I have created one package that is com.ez2xl. And here I have added the Lambda handler. So you know Lambda handler is the entry point for the incoming request for any Lambda function. So I have created this Lambda handler. Let me open this Lambda handler to show you the code. So see this is the Lambda handler which implements the request handler. So this request handler accepts the input and output as you know. So here in our case the input is what? S3 event. So whenever any event occurs inside the S3 bucket then this Lambda will be invoked. So in this case our input is S3 event and output I have given string. So I just want to return any string from that um, Lambda function. Okay. So uh, so this implements the request handler so that will override the handle request method of this request handler so here the input I have given s3 event and the context okay so you can see here I have created the Amazon s3 client okay Amazon s3 client is created by giving the region and default credential why Amazon s3 client uh, needed because we want to read the object content from the s3 client and print the event details in our Cloudless log. So for this, we need the S3 client. So that's why I have created the S3 client object here. Okay. Now, this is the S3 event we have. So this handle request method S3 event is there. So from this S3 event, we will find out the bucket name and file name. And we just print this in the loggers. Bucket name and file name. And by using the S3 client.get object method, we get the object content from that bucket and by using iutil.toString method I just convert this input stream to the string content okay and added it in the loggers that's it about the code so you might have uh, one question in your mind how I came to know s3, uh, s3 event.get records dot get zero dot get s3 that get bucket that get name will return me the bucket name and file name isn't it so let me go to uh, my aws lambda again and i'll show you how the s3 event looks like actually um, when we trigger the lambda on s3 put event okay so let me go to my aws lambda and click here in the test section okay so in the test section you can see the event type so this is the template here in the template section let me select the S3 put okay I'll select the S3 put so that I can show you how the event S3 event looks like so see this is the event this is the event okay records which is a list inside this record we have the S3 object inside this S3 object we have the bucket and bucket we have the name and also we have the object inside this S3. Inside this object we have the key. So key is nothing but your file name. Whatever file you will upload in the S3 bucket that will be stored in the key. Okay. So this is how the S3 event looks like when we upload an object to S3 bucket. Okay. So from this I came to know. Okay. From this record. So record is a list. So I get 0 index of this then get s3 get bucket get name similarly i read the file name and by providing the bucket name and file name to the s3 client i get the content of that s3 bucket clear so far so this is all about the code looks like actually how we can get the content of the s3 object okay by using the s3 client so what we'll do now we'll build this application we will build this application and deploy the jar file in our AWS Lambda and check whether our Lambda will be invoked or not when we upload a particular file to S3 bucket. So let me build this application by using this command ambient clean install. Okay, so build is successful. Uh, let me go to the Lambda again. So this is my Lambda. Let's click here on the code section. So I'll upload the jar file. So click here in the upload form. So I'll upload a jar file. So you can upload the zip or jar file. Let me choose this option. Click here to upload. 
and here let me go to my project that is inside the spring boot lambda trigger sp upload let me go to the target here you can see the jar file let me select this one and save it okay so now my code is saved successfully inside this lambda now one more point inside this code we need to provide the handler properly see here so handler in the handler we have the example that hello then handler request if you remember in my last video i have shown you what is the handler contents actually so handler contains your package name then your class name then your method name so let me edit this section so here my package name is what my package name is com dot easy to excel so this is my package name let me give the package name then my class name so in my case my class name is lambda handler so give your lambda handler then handle request is your method name so here also my method name is same as lambda handle request so keep it as is then save it okay so my lambda handler is ready now if it not modify this lambda handler then it will show you the class class exception okay so now we created the sp bucket we created the lambda function we add the trigger to lambda function also we have written our java code to read the s3 event and print the details in the cloud as log okay and we upload the jar file to our lambda function now we all set to test our code clear so far so now we'll go to our sp bucket and we'll upload a file to this sp bucket and we'll see whether this lambda function is invoked or not so this is our last step so let me go to my sp bucket and here i'll upload a file i'll upload a text file here click here to add file then let me upload a text file i have a text file here in the desktop yeah let's see upload text file so upload this text file so upload is successful let me go to my lambda to see whether my lambda is invoked or not so to check that one i need to click here in the monitor tab okay so in the monitor tab let me see whether there is any recent invocation for this lambda or not it will take some time to show you the logs let me click here to view logs in cloudwatch yeah so you can see that is a log stream let me open it in new tab okay you can see here this is a startup request id so in the logs we have printed the bucket name the bucket name is printed here we have printed the file name file name is also printed here also we have printed the file content that is successfully trigger lambda function while uploading file to s3 bucket so that is the file content of this file whatever file we have uploaded to our what s3 bucket so this s3 upload dot text contains this message okay so that's how your lambda in invocation works when you upload a file to our s3 bucket okay so i hope you like this video this is how our lambda function will be triggered when we upload a file to our s3 bucket so that's it for today's video guys so in today's video we just simply read the s3 event uh, content and print it in our cloudwatch log but in real world scenario uh you may encounter like we need we need to read the content from the s3 bucket and save it to the dynamo db okay so that is that i'll show you in my consecutive videos till then thanks for watching thank you